Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks. This is somewhat of a special episode. It's aimed for actually complete beginners. And um, I was thinking to actually make a tutorial how to get into orbit. So I will focus it on being very simple and actually using plain English rather than scientific English. So what you see me is building a rocket. We're using a, basically a command pod, a place where our Kerbal will squat and hopefully live uh, and we have put a booster and that booster is a solid rocket booster which will take it upwards so the goal for today is to get into orbit so how to do that and when we have to get connected these two together we have actually put the parachute and a booster and at the right hand side you can see the staging which is the little orange marker in the corner stating zero now the obvious problem is to have both of them on the same stage so they would fire simultaneously the booster and the parachute so the correction what i did is to actually put that the first thing that fires is the booster and then followed by a parachute so because we want first our rocket to boost off and then after it has been done burning when it will be falling down the parachute should take over and it should well basically land i have also decided to put the small communications <clears throat> antenna so that uh, if uh, our kerbal decides to collect some science he or she could do so in a simple fashion so uh, I, we will not immediately get into orbit, but I will show you the process of learning and actually how to get into the orbit. So that uh, since this is an uh, episode aimed clearly for the complete beginner, so if you have just booted up a KSP for the first time and don't know nothing, this is a tutorial for you. Okay, this is a rocket and let's press staging, which is in this case a spacebar. And you can see our pilot of the day, Jebediah Kerman, looking ever so happily. And yeah, so what does it take to get to space? Clearly, one small um, rocket booster. No, it doesn't take that. Our rocket takes off vertically. But as you can see, we are climbing at 10,000 meters, which is nice. However... Uh, the atmosphere at Kerbin stops at 75,000 meters, so 75 kilometers. So they, that basically means if you cross that border, you are, congratulations, in space. However, that is not the case at the moment, because we went only 10,000 meters up, and if we go to the map view, which you get by pressing M, then you can see... Uh, we are already on the downwards trajectory coming down. And this uh, little parabola that you see, this arc, represents our trajectory. So we went up and then we're going down. So since we're already going down, we're going to activate our parachute, which we do by pressing a space bar. And that should hopefully result in our pod, command pod with Jebediah, landing safely on the surface of Kerbin. Okay, now I'm not going to go into too much details with that because that the goal today is to get into orbit. Landing safely is something that we will tackle on in different stage. So, what's a typical KSP keyword if it doesn't go far enough? You add more boosters. So we are adding this hammer, which is basically the next bigger booster, which should hopefully then, well first one wasn't enough so the second one should hopefully be enough to take us to space right okay and off we go hit the stage this one is actually much more powerful and as you can see we are having a good acceleration and we are now halfway through our fuel which you can see on the bottom left uh, next to the booster icon saying solid fuel and we are experiencing some tremendous heating effects and ooh, okay well the booster shut off thankfully in the nick of time because if we would have continued too fast what could happen is that we go too fast and due to the atmospheric friction 
uh, either our parachute or our capsule or the rocket altogether could burn because, uh, yeah, that also can happen. Let's switch you into map view. Now, I, our arc is considerably bigger. The top is called Apoapsis and is currently at 128 kilometers, which means it is above the one the 75 mark, which means we are going into space. However, we will not go into orbit. Now, uh, if you examine, we are going up. And uh, the rule of gravity says, whatever goes up must come down. And given the fact that uh, all bodies are subject to, uh, basically, gravity, Kerbin gravity is pulling us back towards itself, despite the fact that we went into space. So going upwards isn't enough. So we need to find another way. Basically, we are going up, and uh, the moment that you reach your apoapsis, which is the highest point of your trajectory, the Kerbin starts pulling you back, and you will be basically falling back to Kerbin. So, which leaves us with the question, well, if we don't get to space that way, well, you do get to space. How do you then get to orbit? How does getting to orbit differ from going to space? And we will be touching on that shortly. Uh, let me just, let's just escort uh, Jebediah as he plummets towards a fiery end, what it seems, because we have gone high up. And right now, if you see, our parachute is red. So if we, even if I wanted to trigger it, I couldn't which means if you go too steep, this will be your fate. Okay, let's revert that flight and let's see then what we need to do. Uh, I to do this, I will construct uh, another rocket. This time I won't be using solid rocket boosters, but I will be rather using the liquid fuel boosters. The difference between liquid fuel and the solid uh, rocket booster is solid rocket booster you cannot control you ignite it it's basically like a firecracker you ignite it and then it goes pop and until it's done you cannot do anything the liquid fuel boosters which I'm adding just now <clears throat> do contain fuel but they don't con contain engine so I've not just now added the engine and uh, this engine will be consuming the fuel from these fuel tanks and it will be propelling us up to space. The good thing about this setup is that you can put any amount of fuel tanks you want, provided that your uh, rocket motor has enough thrust to take you off. So, let's put, I press the T, which is stability assist, Z throttle to max, and then space. Uh, T, is for stability assist which basically keeps the rocket stable and uh, Z is for regulating the throttle. Normally you press shift or control to increase or decrease the thrust respectively. And you can steer the rocket using WASD, in this case I'm pressing D because we said we're not, we don't want to go directly to space, so vertically. So what happens if we go a little bit sideways? We saw that by going sideways, we are going further, we will be traveling more distance. So, as you can see, this rocket is fighting me a little bit, but I want to show you what happens when we go first up, because we have to cross the threshold of 75,000 to be in space, so that atmos because then there is no atmospheric friction. So, we are now burning at roughly 50 degrees, and as you can see, our apoapsis, which is the peak of our trajectory, is increasing, which is good. And also, the length of our trajectory is increasing. So, going sideways means we will go further and further. And as you can see, our line is extending. Now, the question what poses is, what happens if that line extends beyond the rise of Kerbin. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if that happens, in that case, you will be in orbit, because what happens? 
basically that means that you going sideways is actually faster than you falling back. So as you are falling back to Kerbin, the Kerbin always slips underneath your feet. And then you're basically constantly falling. And that's what actually orbit is. For the purpose of this showing, I have deliberately burned just at the steep, at the same angle to show you what happens if you burn at 45 degrees. And rest assured, we will be falling to Kerbin. However, as you can see, we will be almost falling on the completely opposite side of Kerbin. So clearly, burning at a 45 degrees will definitely, well, with this amount of rocket, will definitely not get you into space. Which, me, which brings me to the uh, next iteration of what we will be doing. Let's just uh, show you, basically, as you can see, we are definitely falling. I'm sorry that the game is so dark, but what this means is we will be falling back to the atmosphere and we will be falling back to Kerbin. And as you can see, we already can see the atmospheric heating and since we are falling that fast, our rocket will basically explode due to atmospheric friction. So, okay. Now let's use the same rocket, but we will be using slightly different trajectory. And for some reason my my rocket was dancing, which is a little bit unbeknown to me, but okay. So we are taking a little bit more aggressive. Typically what I normally do, I wait until 2000 meters and then I start tilting towards uh, the east, which is 90 degrees on the nav ball, as you can see. And um, now we will be just thrusting in that direction until our apoapsis, which is the highest peak of the trajectory, reaches above 75,000. So the goal is to get above the atmosphere because then there is no atmospheric friction slowing us down. So as you can see we are burning and the time to apoapsis which is T minus 56, 57 is increasing. That means that we have a good thrust and that our, we are pushing the apoapsis away from us, basically that we are accelerating. And as you can see, our apoapsis is already at 60 kilometers. We'll let it increase a little bit more. Typically, I like my apoapsis to be around 100 because that gives me some margin for error. Basically, 2,000, 25,000 meters. So, now we are traveling and we will be traveling to the apoapsis. Then... When we reach the apoapsis, I, I have cut off my engines, so we are basically coasting, as you can see. We are not burning, but we are more like just gliding, coasting, whatever. And when we reach the apoapsis, I want to accelerate, but I want to accelerate sideways. So I want to be going fast enough so that every time I'm trying to fall down, Kerbin slips from underneath me so so to say so that's kind of the goal so coasting up to the apoapsis and we are already i believe above the atmosphere because uh, a hint is guys that you press that you hear the music so now i have engaged the thrust and i am burning sideways if you consider a nav ball i am burning exactly sideways and you see what happens. If you burn enough, that basically means I was burning like this, completely sideways. And if you burn enough, you stretch your trajectory enough so that we, as you can notice here, we are almost orbital. So to analyze what is going wrong in this case is I believe that simply I don't have enough fuel. So I was doing the ascent correctly, but I ran out of fuel, which means I will need a bigger rocket. So once again, as you can see, 
we are descending, but we are descending at a much gradual, much more gradual pace than we did last time. And this is, guys, the key. So if you, once you reach the apoapsis, the highest peak of your trajectory, and then you burn for a um, significant amount of time, you will end up in orbit, more or less, provided that you have enough fuel. So, once again, our rocket descending into the fire pit, and also, guys, rockets that look like this aren't really that stable or desirable when it comes to, basically, them coming back from orbit, because, you see, this is what happens. It blows. Okay, so, we need a bigger rocket. And as you saw, we needed only a tiny fraction of fuel and we would have ended up in the orbit. So, let's take a smaller fuel tank and stack it on top of this rocket. So, this should be hopefully enough to get us to orbit. Okay, so stability assist, T, Z throttle to max and space to stage. As you can see, we are ascending much slower because we have put more fuel, which means more weight to the rocket. So if you put too much weight, the rocket or the engine won't be powerful enough for you to even lift off. And then you will see the engine ignite, but you are still sitting in one place, wondering what happened. Well, you have too much weight and the rocket engine doesn't have enough power to push you high enough. Okay. This one was basically almost like borderlining, so, but it still has enough thrust. And as you burn your fuel, the rocket itself becomes lighter, which means the amount of acceleration that you're picking up goes up. Well, I, don't, I cannot say if it's exponential, but definitely you have the same amount of thrust, but you have much lighter rocket, which leads to faster acceleration. Okay, so let us try and go aggressively into the orbit. Okay, as you can see this time I'm going a little bit more aggressive on the horizon, but I am trying still to... If I went now too horizontal, too early, I would have never, never gotten my apoapsis outside of atmosphere. So you still have to go basically at an angle of roughly 30-40 degrees at least to be able to push your apoapsis outside of the 75 kilometer mark. And as you can see I have turned on the resources. We are coming low on the liquid fuel and oxidizer but okay as you can see, our apoapsis is now around 81, so I'm not going to go to a 100, but I'll go a little bit lower, just to show you that even at 81, you can basically burn sideways, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is called circularization. That means, basically, that you have circularized your orbit. That means, basically, that all points of orbit are roughly at the same altitude uh, when it comes to carbon. So, at all points when you're going around the carbon, you are roughly at the same altitude. So, once again, burning sideways. By the way, for those of you that are wondering why I'm not using maneuver nodes, this is a tutorial showing you how to do this without the maneuver nodes. And now I'm thrusting a little bit. So, if you're uh, apoapsis goes a little bit too far away from you, you can always go a little bit towards the ground and then you will uh, burn. Okay, so as you can see, this it means that our orbit is more or less circularized. And ladies and gentlemen, we are in the orbit. So, noted that we are almost completely out of fuel, but that basically means that as you can see from above, we will be cir going circles around the planet, which means we are in the orbit. So there are two parameters. One is the apoapsis, which means the point of your trajectory that's the furthest from the body that you are locked to, which is in this case Kerbin. And the other one marked PE 
is the periapsis, meaning that's the lowest point of your trajectory. So, apoapsis, highest, periapsis, lowest. And the green line that you're seeing is a feature of the KSP 1.2 comnet, which means that we are maintaining connectivity to various stations, basically maintaining radio connections, being able to talk, etc., etc. So, but that's not something that we need to worry ourselves about. So, as you can see, we are going circles. Now, this is not the most efficient rocket on how to get to orbit. So, let us fix that in a second. I did say that the rocket gets lighter the more fuel is burned. Uh, and how is this being done is typically you want to have rocket that has multiple stages. The stage means when you press your space bar that stage ignites. So we until now we only had one stage which was basically our entire rocket. Now I'm adding a smaller tank and I will explain a little bit why and then I'm adding another engine. So this is a smaller rocket which will, we will use to circularize or for the higher part of the atmosphere. The rocket that is marked in red we will be using only to get to that point. And I have put something that is called decoupler. That means once when this uh, fuel is consumed from the bottom stage we will be ditching that stage and just igniting the small rocket. So, one important thing to always do in KSP is check your staging. So first, will the main engine fire at the bottom, then at the same time we'll fire the decoupler and also the small engine, which will basically disconnect the rest of the rocket and ignite the small engine, and then at the last we will fire, be firing the parachute if we need to. Note that I've also added launch clamps, which are the red thingies, which will help me stabilize the craft so it doesn't dance. And I have put them in the same stage as the main engine. So, once I put the stability assist, Z to throttle to max, and space to stage. Now, you see them nicely disconnecting, and our rocket is going straight and true. Now we have ignited, ignited the first stage, which is marked by uh, in the bottom left by, and this is called stage two here. We have stage two, stage one, and stage zero. But when you are launching, usually say this is the first stage, uh, and when you dump it, then it's the second stage, and so on. It can get a little bit confusing, but regarding the naming. So, I'm just gently pressing the D, or tapping the key, to basically take our trajectory a little bit uh, further, to the, further to the east. And as you can see, we're already at 5,000 meters, and which means I'm going much more vertical this time. There is no really right or wrong. It's only the ascent that gets you to space, or it doesn't. I typically use more vertical ascent when I have a bigger rocket that is basically dumping more uh, engines and boosters along the way and then I'm using uh, much more aggressive maneuver to get into the space when I'm using uh, smaller simpler rockets but I'm showing you both approaches that you see that it works so we are once again at 45 or 50 degrees roughly and we are trying to get our Apoapsis once again around between 80 and 100. Okay. 86. I think that will do. Now I will show you how to use maneuver nodes. Basically, you go to the apoapsis and you click, left click, and say add maneuver. And then you drag the prograde green marker, which I did, until you get a rough estimate and you want the two be to be basically around the same height. You can uh, judge it. The projected line is marked with gray, with uh, sorry, yellow. And as you can see, this has put uh, roughly a number, 1,399.2 meters per second, which is something which we call the delta V. This is amount of fuel you'll need to 
burn or amount of change in your velocity that you need to do to be able to get to that, well, not to get to orbit, but to get to that desired trajectory. <laughs> so, we, as you can see, we are roughly aligned and uh, we can see that estimated burn, which is saying to the bottom right of the nav ball, is 41 seconds and that our node is in 57. So we want our burn to start when we are roughly 20 seconds before the node and then it continues burning until 20 seconds until we are after the node. But uh, this is not factoring in that I'm using the smaller engine. So the smaller engine means that this will change a little bit. So pressing the accelerator now. And as we burn through the rest of the fuel, I'll be hitting space once the engine stops, which will initiate the second stage, which is now. As you can see, we have dumped the stage one and ignited the small engine. So this is now our craft, and this is what will be going to the orbit today. Notice that our estimated burn time has increased a little bit because this, the other engine that we are currently using is much less powerful. However, it doesn't need to push as much weight as the first one, which means it will do the job just nicely. That one is actually more fuel efficient, which means we will be getting more bang for our buck. And as you can see, we were able to circularize, we will just kill the maneuver node, and, well, more or less circularize, let's just burn a little bit more, with plenty of fuel to spare. So that's kind of the benefit of you not having to push a bigger rocket. Now let's press E to EVA Jeb, and let's have Jeb wave us because I think we will be concluding this tutorial uh, because I have shown you how to get to space and how to do so using basically staging as a technique and also how to basically get to space either way. So once again guys, thank you very much for watching. This is Groundworks signing off from the orbit and I'm hoping that you will be joining me soon.